Thank you, Professor Liebman. Please uh, stay one more minute with us. We have a few questions. I'm really grateful, grateful for attracting attention of our physicians, doctors to hemorrhages in ONH, optic nerve head. So there was an event uh, of Professor Flammer in Switzerland. There was a discussion of hemorrhages in the disc. We see the more uh, in advanced glaucoma patients. It's uh, when there are no no fibers, there are no hemorrhages. Usually, hemorrhages occur a few months before sinning of RNFL. Doctors in Russia are interested. How would you explain? Uh, how would you ex uh, interpret the nature of such hemorrhages? Well, as you know, there has been controversy for many years over whether these hemorrhages represent a primary vascular or mechanical process. So uh, the proximity of the disc hemorrhage to an existing nerve fiber layer defect, they're usually at the edge, or at the edge of a small notch, that suggests that the damage is occurring at that location. When we do swept source or enhanced depth imaging OCT, we can see very often that a degeneration of the lamina in that region. So it's my feeling that the collapse of the lamina cribrosa, the neurodegeneration, causes a blood vessel to rupture the blood comes forward and we see it as the disc hemorrhage. So to me, the collapse of tissue is what's causing the hemorrhage, the collapse of the lamina cribrosa and its degeneration, and perhaps the collapse of the nerve fiber layer or the rim tissue is causing the hemorrhage. To me, that does not mean it is primarily vascular in nature. Um, it's just a marker for disease progression, typically rapid progression, that we do see in the nerve fiber layer. If we look carefully, though, before that time, if we look at older visual field tests or older OCT images, very often we see change in the OCT or change in the visual field was occurring even before the hemorrhage. So that the, the disease is progressing, we get a hemorrhage, and then the disease continues to progress, very often it seems at a faster rate. So it's a critically important component of the of of disease, and we actually look at the optic nerve every visit. We don't dilate every visit, but we look for a disc hemorrhage every time we see the patient with a handheld indirect lens. Thank you very much for your answer. Your point of view is consistent with the results of the retrospective study from South Korea where disc hemorrhages were predictors of progression and also the origin of cause. Cause of uh, hemorrhage was also insufficient decrease of elevated IOP, so IOP should be controlled. Therefore, actually we discussed practically all questions and uh, there's one question to Professor Liman. How topical is to study blood perfusion or circulation? Circulation, um, eye circulation, as far as we discuss the importance of vascular factor in progression of glaucoma. Well, I think uh, there are two fact, two issues. One is the practical component, which is the patient in the examination chair in front of us. And so I like to address that patient's uh, issues. So I asked the patient a detailed history of hypertension um, or nocturnal hypotension, whether they stand up very rapidly, when they stand up rapidly, do they get dizzy? Um, very often we see a little, small little uh, old lady. She uh, has a very low blood pressure and what looks like progressing normal tension glaucoma. So we take a detailed history of the patient who's there with us. In terms of research, I think it's a very important uh, topic um, because we need to better understand uh, what's happening to our patients and the role of perfusion. We need better tools to measure the perfusion in the eye. And then we need trials, intervention trials, that allow us to adjust blood pressure 
There are ways of doing this, whether we uh, do that medically by perhaps reducing blood pressure control or dosing blood pressure medications in the morning rather than the evening, or perhaps salt loading patients who have blood pressure that's too low. But we need to perform interventional trials to create another potential target for treatment. It would be nice if we had other ways of treating this disease other than just lowering the pressure in the eye. We need a neuroprotectant that strengthens uh, the retinal ganglion cells and their axons directly, and we need something to enhance perfusion in the organ, in the eye. So I think those are, are important diagnostic and therapeutic challenges that we face and great areas for potential research. Thank you very much for your answer. I would like to hear Professor Park. They have normotensive glaucoma as well. Do you also study uh, ocular perfusion? Or do you pay attention to vascular factor in your research? Well, um, in our um, clinic, uh, we mostly measure the pressure and we we want to follow their pressure is uh, high during the night or in the morning so um, in those cases uh, we can um, measure their diurnal iop and also we can calculate ocular perfusion pressure but uh, mostly um, perfusion pressure uh, is not our routine uh, measurement. But uh, as Dr. Liebman mentioned, we need to check their um, blood pressure. And also, we need to consult our internal medicine, whether their um, pressure is uh, managed properly. So um, as a whole, um, Perfusion pressure is also an uh, important factor because it is, it is IOP independent factor. But um, during treatment, intraocular pressure is number one. And even though the intraocular pressure is well controlled, if the patient is progressing, then we need to check whether there is IOP independent factors like uh, ocular perfusion pressure or their systemic blood pressure is low those those factors we need to we need to check for the research ocular perfusion or oct and geography that is a uh, quite attractive field that we need to uh, do research for the pathogenesis of glaucoma Thank you very much, Professor Park. Again, we have a question from Russian doctors. If you have so many normal tension glaucoma, do you use aggressive treatment? Sinus trabeculectomy in patients in home, uh, IOP is um, within the average statistic norm. But you see progression of glaucoma. Would you intervene surgically? Would you treat aggressively such patients? Um, if the patient uh, intraocular pressure is within normal and well controlled, but the, the patient is progressing, then I I recommend surgery, trabeculectomy, hmm. even though the pressure is within normal limit. Uh, we need to lower the pressure more. On this important issue, most of our patients do have pressures that are statistically normal when they're operated. We treat them, we lower the pressure medically or with laser, and the pressures are 16, 17, 18. That's the most common condition for our patients after they're treated, but they're still progressing. That's, that is a very common clinical scenario. One could argue that if you get the pressure down to six, seven, or eight, and the patient's still progressing, that there are other mechanisms at play and, and further pressure lowering is not warranted. 
but most of the patients actually have a pressure in the teens when we operate on them. Very interesting comments and very important practical recommendation. Fortunately, our telebridge comes um, to its end. And to summarize, I would like to show you the last one, the last slide, where I summarized all presentation for take home messages. So what is important for our physicians, our doctors to use for their practice? Thank you very much, my dear colleagues, for your attention. And thank you for participating in our event. So, colleagues, take home messages. Identification, progression, and monitoring of the rate of progression is the key component or moment. Uh, to more, uh, more precisely measure ROP, we should examine the structure and the function, and also circulatory parameters in the future, or CT and geography will be used for monitoring so progressing thinning of RNFL um, ganglion cells and IPL would allow it to identify progression of glaucoma before changes in the visual field. And all speakers, speakers mentioned the wide field OCT to see uh, macula, disc, and peripapillary retina. Glaucoma is important. Um, uh, for glaucoma, early macular involvement is characteristic. Therefore, central visual field should be measured, perimetry 10 2, and also microcirculation. In progression glaucoma, we should take into account the specific role of fusion pressure. So, for you should avoid, avoid its significant decrease, drop, especially nocturnal drop, and glaucoma is a multi factorial disease, therefore, we are trying now to evaluate glaucoma phenotype and in each individual case, we should keep in mind these phenotypes. Dear authors, dear, dear participants, dear doctors, dear colleagues, thank you very much for joining us in, uh, on Friday evening. Dear colleagues, we heard the very fundamental presentations. Our topic today was diagnosis of glaucoma. So the more equipment we have at our disposal, the more questions we still have. As I understood, um, so glaucoma questions are endless. And uh, an important remark or comment on uh, managing and of our patients, glaucoma patients, and interpretation of data and practical conclusions that we should use. In our practice, it will be a topic for our future conferences and symposiums. I want to thank all those who helped to organize uh, this Congress, our Federal Medical Biological Center, Bornezan Center, which participated in the organization of this symposium. Natalia Ivan, my congratulations to you. Oh, with your success, I wish you great success in the future. Thank you, dear colleagues.